with COVID and with the, the great reset that's happened, <clears throat> every player in the market now has to think of themselves as a multi-channel brand. And I mean, whether that's wholesale brands, whether it's e-commerce, direct to consumer, pure digital brands, whether that's retail brands or even malls, which I think are going to become brands as well, um, or you know the big online marketplaces, they all have to think of themselves as brands that are kind of free floating across multiple channels whether that those channels be wholesale, whether those channels be mail order, whether those channels be uh, e-commerce or, or social commerce, or whether those channels be physical stores or physical malls. So to me, that's part of the great reset that everyone has to think of themselves as a brand. So if you think of yourself as a brand, you then have to question what does it take to create a brand in this modern environment? And a big part of my work is uh, helping people understand that what it took before to create a brand or a retailer or any of these is not what it takes now. Because basically, and this is the big picture, we've moved from a, an oligopoly situation with a few players in each vertical to perfect competition. Uh, so if you look at the historical classical brand retail supply chain, it was dominated both at the brand level and the retail level by relatively few players in each geographical uh, uh, market and each uh, uh, product vertical. So think as, as a consumer in 1991, you know, where could you buy things? Well, you could get in your car and drive maybe for 10 miles. So it was all the stores, you know, within 10 miles of you. Okay. And if it was a more specialist item, that was probably only two or three stores. Right? That was your choice. That was your universe of where you could buy from. And the stores that controlled those locations, once they'd been built and once you know, there was an established retail chain out there, it was very hard for new people to break in because it was very expensive to build stores and develop uh, uh, a new store group. Um, and if it, at the branding level of the supply chain, it was the same. You know, you had relatively few brands um, in each vertical. Uh, they were well established. They had big sales forces with established trade relationships with the retailers. They had big advertising budgets and it was really hard for new people to break in. And as a result, there were relatively few of them in each, in each sector. So both at the brand level and the retail level, you got relatively few players. And so what is your competitive advantage? Well, basically incumbency, being there having been built before was your competitive advantage. And you didn't actually need to do a whole lot more than, 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 than this in order to succeed. Or if you were a brand, you had to develop some products, segment the market, develop products for the segments, and run mass advertising. And if you're a retailer, you had to accept the products from the brands, have your store open, and have a few staff in the store, and make sure you were in stock. That's all you needed to be a retail brand or a manufacturer's brand. These days, the universe has changed. So firstly, uh, the barriers to entry have dropped enormously. So the cost of, a, of, of getting a Shopify website, having a great product idea and promoting it over social media like TikTok have come down dramatically. And it doesn't depend on how much money you've got. It depends more about how unique your idea is and how good you are at communicating that idea. So it's nothing to do with the vast, having vast amounts of money. It's to do with your skills. And your, in, in, and your level of innovation and the way that you treat your customers, the way that you interact with your customers. So um, the, the, the barriers to entry have dropped and what we've seen in most verticals and geographies is two things. Firstly, there's been a massive wave of, wave of startups um, which have been highly innovative and have developed whole new ways of, of branding and, and dealing with their customers. And, and, and much more innovative in terms of products. And the second thing we've seen, which is not often recognized, is we've had a massive influx of international brands into, into geographical markets. So, you know, as I say, 20, 30 years ago, you were dealing, if you were in Britain, you were dealing with, you know, a bunch of British brands, essentially, uh, maybe some American brands. But now, if you go in, you know, if you go on Google and put any product category in, you're going to get people from all around the world selling to you. You're going to get literally millions of people trying to sell to you. So the, the, the number of players has approached what we call perfect competition because there's almost an infinite number of players uh, competing for that consumer dollar.
The other thing that's changed, which is uh, also one of the preconditions for perfect competition, is consumer knowledge. So if you look in 1991, where did consumers get their information about products? Well, a little bit of word of mouth, uh, but people's ability to communicate to each other as peers was very limited. They, they used to say that people used to tell seven. If they had a good experience or a bad experience, they used to tell an average of seven people. So it wasn't very much. So, secondly, mainly where you got your information from was from the brands and the retailers themselves. It's from their advertising or from store staff or whatever. That's where you got your information. So it was hardly objective information. It was uh, very biased information. And if the brand had enough money to tell you that it was great, you probably believed that it was great, even if it wasn't. There was no objective measure of brands. Um, and what we've got now is another element of the internet revolution is what I call com communications revolution, which is things like social media and, and peer product reviews. So now, where do most people get their information about products? They get it either from the people they know, but people have a much bigger universe of who they can communicate with. If you've had a great brand experience, you can now sell, tell 7,000 people on your, on your social media feed, not 7 people. And secondly, you, you don't get it from the brands anymore, you get it from peer review. So the first thing you do if you want to decide what brand to do is you go on Google or you go on Amazon or whatever, you, and, or you go on Trustpilot and you read the reviews. And those reviews, they're not always great, we know that, they're not always, and they can be faked or whatever, but they're a whole lot more objective than when it used to be from the manufacturers themselves. And that's what people trust. So consumers' trust in manufacturer messaging has gone down completely and tr their trust in their peers has gone up. So that is the communications revolution. And that has changed, uh, that, you know, that's changed the dynamic because one of the, one of the preconditions for perfect competition is, is perfect consumer knowledge. And now the consumer more or less has perfect knowledge of, of all the brands out there. So those, those two changes, the drop in the barriers and the rise in consumer knowledge, has, has turned it from oligopoly into perfect competition, where the consumer now is faced with millions of brands competing for their business. It's changed the whole balance of power between uh, producers and consumers. Because basically, 30 years ago, the consumer was like, a, was like Pavlov, Pavlov's dogs, you know, they, they, you, you know, you, you, you you researched it, you segmented it, you developed products, you worked out what the consumer's buttons were, emotional buttons, you pressed the buttons with mass advertising, and the consumers obediently turned up in store and took away the products. Now, the consumer is much more powerful than that, much more active, and of course the web is an interactive medium, and now, uh, encouraged by the new brands that are coming in that are being very innovative in this regard, consumers expect a much more interactive relationship with brands. They expect to be listened to. They expect to be much more involved. If they're going to give that dollar to a brand, they want something more than just a transaction. And that's the key. So you, we've had a massive competitive shift. And I think most people miss that because most people focus on the channels and the, the nuts and bolts of how you're going to build the channels or whatever. And they miss the big picture, which is, which is that, in that in that very tough arctic world of millions of competitors what it takes to succeed as a brand has completely changed you can't just have a transactional focus you can't just have a product it's not good enough anymore 30 years ago if you had that product in your store on the right day when the advertising was being run that was enough and the consumer only expected to come in and transact they come in pick it up and go away they didn't expect anything more but if you have that mentality today you're going to be in the cesspool with millions of people with much lower cost bases than you you're competing with direct out of the factory cross-border e-commerce coming straight out of out of china now aliexpress is planning to be able to ship within 48 hours at three dollars a shipment anywhere in the world and they're building a, the, the the super highway to to do that you know so you you know if you're, you're sitting there in britain with your high cost base and you're thinking you know i'm going to be the low cost producer like i was 30 years ago you're not so a, a, a transactional price-led philosophy will get you absolutely nowhere. As we've seen with the collapse of all these huge American store groups and British store groups, which you know, were just basically large warehouses full of stock, um, and they've all collapsed you know, one by one because you know, it's got too expensive to, to be able to retail that way. And, and so you know, what it takes to be a brand now is completely different. And that, that's the key. And, you know, to me, that's the key, apart from channel management and exactly how you manage the two channels, that's the key to the future, is to see yourself as a brand and understand exactly how good you've got to be in order to be a successful new generation brand. Uh, and that's, that's kind of my message.